A Series of Changes, the History of the Cuban National Series Baseball's roots in Cuba can be traced back as far as 1864. American students and sailors introduced the game, playing for leisure and eventually including the locals. Baseball received greater acceptance in Cuba as it was considered antithetical to Spanish culture and sports such as bullfighting or soccer. This anti-Spanish sentiment, the resentment of Spanish colonial rule, and the desire for national sovereignty came to a head with the Cuban War of Independence, fought from 1895 to 1898. Baseball was recently declared as a unique cultural heritage in Cuba. It is more than just a game and a unique prism to view the Cuban spirit through. The choice of a sport considered American in origin and spirit seems somewhat ironic today with the cold relationship between the neighboring countries being rather complex. The politics are based in Cuba's perpetual struggle, at least spiritually, against colonization, the ghosts of the Cold War, and the growth of socialist beliefs spearheaded by Castro's revolution. This has led to 60 plus years of political standoff with the United States. Historical record keeping for Cuban baseball leagues is often incomplete. Increasing information is coming to the fore thanks to the internet community. The late Peter Bjarkman worked diligently to uncover and share much of this info, and thanks to his work via Sabre and BaseballReference.com, we have the most definitive data available. All that said, in my own research, I had to make many assumptions due to the gaps in info. I hope this represents the most accurate interpretation of this long history. The first half century of organized baseball in Cuba was very Havana-centric. The top league consisted of three to five teams in different periods. These teams usually played in Havana, but represented western provinces and towns such as Matanzas, Cienfuegos, or Santa Clara. Smaller feeder leagues started to develop across the country with teams in every city. Trades workers often comprised the teams. The team names were often inspired by these professions. Affiliated professional baseball would arrive in the 1940s as the Havana Cubans would represent the Florida International League. They would be replaced by the AAA Sugar Kings in 1954. This ran at the same time as the professional Cuban Winter League, which gave rise to many of Cuba's 20th century stars as well as being a winter haven for myriad Negro League stars. Cuban history and its baseball history pivot with Fidel Castro's rise to power. His 26th of July revolution saw him nationalize all industry and sports and designate all athletes as amateurs. After a short hiatus, baseball was reimagined as the Cuban National Series in 1961. 2021 thus represented the 60th campaign for Cuba's top baseball league. The first Cuban National Series looked fairly similar to previous Cuban Winter Leagues. Four squads played ostensibly in Havana at Latino Americano Stadium. The season was 39 games. Those teams were Occidentales, Orientales, the Azucareros, and Industriales. Cuba had six provinces at this point and would move to each province being represented eventually, but the original four teams covered broader geographic areas, often with some overlap. Occidentales, the West, and Orientales, East, would be team names early on, but later all-star designations and dividers as West would face East. Occidentales would win the first series and Orientales would win in 1967. The teams were disbanded or at least the monikers repurposed after the 1967-1968 season. The Azucareros, or Sugar Harvesters, representing Via Clara. Today's Via Clara Noranas pay homage to this chapter of their baseball lineage by colloquially using the nickname but sometimes nod to the Santa Clara Leopardos via their mascot, a leopard, and also mixing in the name in non-official capacities. Via Clara flew the flag for today's Ciego de Avila, Sancti Spiritus, and Cienfuegos Western Provinces. Industrialis, so named as they represented the industrial factory workers of Havana City, were a nod to the previous pro teams in the capital as they took the name of the Habana Leones or Lions and the blue color scheme of the Almendares Alacranes. 
The Blue Lions had the longest, but not completely continuous tenure in the National Series. For a short period in the 1970s, they instead competed in the Selective Series. This is frequently glossed over as the Industrialists are considered the cornerstone franchise. Their 12 series titles are the most, although they are currently in a decades-long championship drought, and many will point to Santiago's eight titles since 1977, and the advent of the modern series period is holding more weight. Some call their rivalry Yankees vs. Red Sox-esque, I liken it to Yankees-Dodgers. Either way, they both battle for Cuban baseball supremacy or at least bragging rights. 1965 saw the first expansion for the league. Industrialis, Occidentalis, and Orientalis are joined by Centralis, who appear to be the spiritual successors of the now absent, at least in branding, Azucareros. The brand new squads are the Hennecareros of Matanzas, representing the rope or fiber material farmers. The Grangeros of Camaway join for what will prove to be a decade run carrying the banner of the conventional farmers. 1967 was the second big expansion. The league doubled in size to 12 teams and the schedule grew to 99 games. The Azucareros name returns at the same time Las Villas replaces Centralis. This lineage is one of the more confusing aspects as they all appear to have a connection to Via Clara. Matanzas becomes the second squad in the city of Bridges. The Mineros of Santiago or ore miners become the first team associated with Cuba's second biggest city. Also joining are Habana, which refers to the province and not the city, and begins a winding lineage that will become the La Habana Vaqueros before the more recent creation of the Mayabeque province and today's hurricanes. Pinar del Rio enters the fray with the geographically named Pinar del Rio and the Vigueros, or tobacco growers, receiving two teams at the same time. Today's Pinar del Rio Vigueros are an amalgamation of the two franchises, with a third team, the Forest Owls, thrown in, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. They join the Henecaneros, Industriales, Grangeros, Occidentales, and the slightly rebranded Oriente. This structure would last five years until the addition of two teams in 1972. The constructors, or construction workers, who the best evidence points to representing the city of Havana, join for a short stint. The other squad to join are the Serranos, or mountain men. Little info is available, but the name is revived in the future as part of the selective series comprised of players from Santiago. At this point, the season is reduced to 78 games. 1974 sees some odd structural changes. The league is still 14 teams, apparently in the same locales, but there are many name changes. The schedule is half to 39 games, but the new competitions, the special series, and the series selectiva are added. Both of these run 54-game schedules, and for three seasons at least, Industrialis put greater weight on these comps as they take a hiatus from the National Series. Havana City has three teams in the National Series at this point. The Agricultores, Agricultural Workers, perhaps more farmers, the Arrocereros, or Rice Growers, and the Metropolitanos. Head on over to cubadugout.com for an in-depth look at the metros. Also joining are the Cafeteleros, or coffee growers, who appear to be from Grandma. The Citricultores, or citrus growers, who might just be a rebranding of the Matanza squad. The Forestales, the arborists, or lumberjacks, are likely a remonikered Pinar del Rio. And the Ganaderos, or ranchers, from Camaway, are the last new entry. All of these moves lead us to 1977 and the advent of the modern Cuban National Series, which I will detail in part two of the Cuban National Series, a series of changes. Stay tuned for that.